the other way. All right, well, we'll take a look at what you guys thought about this matchup and who you think will win. Of course, these we numbers have work both ways. <laughs> 69% for EG, that's a pretty stellar number right yeah. there. And 25% for Space Station with a 6% potential draw. I don't think it should be that skewed. Well, I mean, EG. that's pretty close to the numbers you just saw for the previous matchup, but I don't think mm. this is near as, as big of a gap. Space, uh, honestly, I, I think it's mostly, obviously, the fan base. This is a fan contest. Yeah, people still, are which, telling SSG a little short. Yeah, and obviously you can you can vote on these before every single match on twitter.com forward slash ESL Rainbow Six. Uh, so make sure you do. We have it for every single match, every single region. But Space Station are such a scary team. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't think Brian showed up super strong on SSG. So we're no. placing with someone like Bosco. If you thought SSG were good before, I think they should be up a notch or two. And that's the thing. A lot of people are like, oh, maybe Brian wasn't good enough. No, no, no. Brian and Bosco are both excellent players. I'm just talking about on this team. Yeah, yeah. Didn't seem to fit and in. And that's all. the thing. They play different roles and will fill different roles within yeah. the team. And that's what you're looking for. At the top, it's not just about, oh, we're just dropping a player. And a lot of people, this this conversation has resurged uh, after Goddess was dropped from the squad last night. It's just not about how good the player is. It's just how everybody meshes together. Because you're looking for the top. Yeah. And if you want to look for the top, Team chemistry is number one. I just hope if NVK doesn't have a stellar performance tonight, we don't have to hear the millions of calls of drop NVK, right? When it comes to that kind of oh thing. Oh my it's, god. That's not a good idea. I'll just let you guys know. If you weren't aware, that's a terrible, terrible idea. But either way. We are waiting on uh, final player here to get into our lobby before yeah. we launch the matchup. So we'll remind you we were playing on Villa, and really, Villa is still one of my favorite maps. I think for me, it's Coastline, then Villa on, on top. It's like. I love these maps. Border is like right after them. If I'm thinking them in the correct order, that is, you know, that those Villa and Coastline are the two newer of the maps. So, unless I'm missing one in there. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I I fell in love pretty quickly with Villa. It was kind of a right there, well, it's right there. Your map. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. I'm not Slightly wearing the biased. hat today. No. I refuse to wear the hat. He does take it off occasionally, not in bed, but when he's out and about, occasionally takes it off just to just to poof his hair up. I thought we we're gonna keep that between us. It is between us. This is not a person, it's a camera. <laughs> yeah, just us and the few. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Well, I, I was wearing quite a bit of red today. I was wearing a red sweater with a red jacket and a red beret. And now the red face to match it. Yeah, he embarrasses me all the time. What can, what can I do? What can I do? It's in my blood, which is also red. Anyways, <laughs> he, Villa. He knows his colors. <laughs> Villa is an, that's why I trained for six years to be an optometrist. But Villa is an excellent map because of the way the sites are designed around yeah. it. There's always something that allows you to be flexible on the defense. And of course, it is statistically more defensive sided than the attacking side. Is. If I was to say there could be an adjustment, though, it could be to that library bomb site. 100%. That could use a bit of tweak in terms of just take away a window, perhaps. And here's the enough. thing. If you were to use the reinforcements on that site correctly, you would still need an extra one. With 10 reinforcements available, you would still need an extra one to fully reinforce the side wall from the main hall yeah. down into the back of the site, in the desk. Well, it does make it a struggle because uh, there is also hard breachers that can tend to open holes in those. So Very true. Very I true. mean, we do in the future have another operator that can help defend those, but it's not available yet. So you're kind of dependent pretty much on Bandit and Mute at the moment to try and do that. Yeah, well, yeah, we don't have Clyde just yet. Obviously, he's in play, yeah. but we can't play him in competitive play. I think yeah. right now, Clyde's kind of in a good spot when it comes to balancing. If he had three Irtilas instead of two, that would be a bit eh. But well, that's like, how it was originally before yes, the changes in the TTS. I, I, saw, I saw the video first, and I'm like, whoa, no, yeah. three stop. I mean, I gotta give credit though. There, there is some good balancing being done in the TTS, the last two releases, where there was changes made and uh, for the better. And they didn't seem to be ones where it was like, oh, you know, we've got to make another shift now to adjust. It seemed to be like put things kind of right where they belong. I mean, I would say that maybe the Claymore on Nomad is still working pretty effectively. Maybe it's you know you're not burning ADSs, but it's still pretty strong combined with the air jab. In a lot of situations, especially yeah. when you shoot three people through a wall. I think, I, I know we're going off on a bit of a tangent, but we are kind of waiting for the players, and we haven't really had the time to discuss these sorts of things. So we're just starting things off so you guys can talk about it as well in Twitch chat or in social media, just so we get this rolling as, 
course, the quarantine will be lifted in the next couple months on these two yeah. operators. So I don't know if that takes place before or after Invitational. Though. I don't. That's what I, I wonder. Yeah, actually, that is that is a very because it, it would be kind of strange after all this time of play to just quickly introduce two new operators that yeah. haven't had the time to play. Whereas if they've played over an entire season, maybe it makes a little more sense. So I do think there's a good chance it would be after Invitational, very but I certainly don't know for sure. We'll have to verify with that and let you guys know within the next uh, few days. Well, ASAP, really. Yeah, it would be good to know. So hopefully that's been decided. Because uh, it was a three-month quarantine. and Minimum. Yeah, I think that, yeah, minimum. That's true. That's yeah. True. So we are starting off. So, you know, get the conversation rolling. I think for me, Nomad is just the big problem with her is that there's no audio cue and it instantly jabs you. So it's kind of frustrating to play against. Have you said there's no audio cues for Claymores either? Well, there is. With the placing it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the click no, you die? Click, and then it, it blows up. Yeah. There's there's that half second where you can destroy it, so you can still deal I, with it. I suppose so. I mean, that's like that's like destroying a frost map as you're jumping on it. Exactly. And I it, suppose. It works. Oh, it works I'll well. give you that. I'll give you that. It's, oh, that's smart, it's guys. It's like Q. Well, not going to deal with glass like you mentioned. It might mm -hmm. get banned, might get played, depending on the map. In this case, not going to get played, and that is due to Space Station not wanting to deal with it, which I don't blame them for. Maverick, Maverick. Also, he's also a good operator on this map. I'm not surprised yeah. to see that, especially on the top floor. Yeah, if you're attacking Trophy. Be. Yeah. He's a, he can be pretty nasty. Yeah. We saw teams like um, uh, Penta, Panics, for example, playing a lot of Maverick, trying to take advantage of that. No longer on yeah. Penta Panics. Yeah, no. It's, Blast uh, is now on. Only, yeah, well, at least there's someone. All right, well, Echo will be the one removed, and Space Station probably won't ban the Maestro, right? There you go. Class yeah, is going to get well. removed. That makes sense, yeah. after what I was saying about what Gotcha was doing earlier. Yeah, maybe that will translate into something that has already been prepared uh, by the squad, but, you know, who knows? It's well, this seemed like some good counterbanding going on here, banning operators that they know each other good at. I, I got to imagine they know how to deal with uh, Maestro to an extent. But it's like it's not even just his gadget. His gun is so brutal, and yes. the Redeemer is a good Maestro player, not just an average Maestro player. So they are definitely going to have to deal with that, as you said, once they get to that site. But so good. they've got to get there first. It's easier said than done. So good. Friendship with easily ended. Friendship with the Redeemer now in play. There you go. Traitor. I'm sorry, Kev. I love you. <laughs> Anyways, that aside, let's uh, get into this matchup again. Villa, a highly technical map. Yeah. There's quite a few moving parts to this map that allows to teams to really do whatever they want bomb. on defense. You want to roam, you're good. You want to play more on site and anchor, works out pretty well as well. It just depends on how you maneuver throughout. Now, what you see a thing you need doing here early on is destroying the front of, or the, the, the floor right in front of the wall. And there's a big reason behind that is because we've been talking about impact tricks where you can destroy thermite charges that are set up on this wall. Uh, so what a lot of teams start doing is just playing the thermite on the floor. They can put the extra thermite charge and it blows up a part of the wall in front of it. It works, but if you destroy the floor, that cannot happen, which in my opinion, is why you should never run Thermite on this map and only play Ivana. She is so much more flexible and Impact will not do anything against her her Xkairos. Later on, like, yeah, if she puts the Xkairos on the half, on the middle of the wall, yeah, sure, but if she's doing it correctly on the bottom side of the, of the wall, 100% you'll at least have a line of sight to play with something on it. Well, what's interesting to me as well is essentially Space Station's bringing three shotguns because the Mute was also running a shotgun, as well as you have essentially a shotgun pistol on Maestro. So they have the ability to set up a lot of structures. You see mm -hmm. the top of the walls for the impact nades as well as the floor that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, so. I, I believe Thinking Nade is running uh, impacts here. I'd like to check that for a second, Marcy. I would can put over to the smoke. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, they definitely have uh, all the utility they need to make this work, although Rampy's not necessarily going to be bringing a lot of direct utility to address things, but he's going to be a flexible roamer, assuming they don't catch him off guard. But uh, I think he should be able to play that role somewhat effectively, but they are going to take from the usual side here to control the statuary potentially first. It is always risky to be using this drone to be droning, as you could potentially lose it, uh, unless you know exactly where you're going to be using the shock. But in this case, doesn't necessarily need to use it for uh, a lot of set of utility outside of perhaps the mute jammers and the ADSs. All right, well, the Ash is going to drone oh, in. And, oh, 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 oh. oh, no, that was uh, that was a bit of an easy kill there. Geo will go down, or Senpai <laughs> Geo. <laughs> there you go. So the Ash is going to get removed from play. Impact will... 
grenade and flash will get thrown in. All and the timing. There you go. The impact grenade will work as Canadian will get one. At least take down the mute, which means no more C4s available. The other side of the map, though, still in control of Space Station Gaming. And EG should be getting a wall open here, at least soon TM. I'm not sure if they're even going to be able to set any thermite charges. Canadian trying to peek in, but the LMI and the Gjmot has already been set. Smoke has been thrown in, and there you go. They've at least opened the bottom side of the wall to try and have some sort of angle on things. Necrox chucking the nade and will find the spot on Bosco. Canadian connects on Rampy. Now Smoke's being thrown in from Thinking Nade. Redeemer's already on the floor here, and they found the angle to try and take him out. And Thinking Nade is the only one alive. Information should have been called out here for EG if they did spot Redeemer down on the floor. And they're going to go for the pickup. Young will go for Fuser Plant. Redeemer. Getting one kill here. We've seen him do so much damage. Thinking Nade will drop one. Diffuser is set on the floor, and they're trying to play here right behind the reinforced wall. At least the vault door here. Redeemer moving in close to Maestro. He's done so much work like this in the past, and he'll find it. Thinking Nade as well. And round number one will go the way of SSG. The retake, beautiful. From Thinking Nade and Redeemer, the two anchors will make things work. And man, nobody really finishing off the Maestro in the back. Kind of killed it there for EG, but. I think you kind of spelled it out before the game even started with Redeemer and those clutches. <laughs> the fact oh, Redeemer that Redeemer on Maestro and yeah. on Aviator and Villa. Oh well, yeah. It's like uh, it's like thinking it goes. You know what? All I got to do to win this is just pick up my buddy Redeemer over here. Now, to be fair, he did get a kill of his own afterwards, but he picks up Redeemer, and guess what? Not a single one of them takes damage after that. Yep. Yeah. They just they just decimate them just because of the two man. Now, had it been thinking needed by himself, that would have been a very difficult retake. So the fact that he picked him back up was exactly what he needed to do, and it's just their inability to find that angle that you're talking about. Yeah, they had an angle at first, but then they lost it by his ability to kind of drag his corpse away just far enough to become an uncorpse. And it worked out. We'll see how well they do on Statue. We talked about that being also a good site for him as well. So we'll see how that works out. Canadian trying to uh, trick a little bit in terms of the sixth pick, but just going to be playing the operator who's playing last round anyways. Rampy this time, instead of going for uh, Ella as the Rome operator, he's going to be bringing the pulse this time to be able to potentially play a little bit more from below, which is, again, still going to be kind of a Rome roll, but one that is a little more dangerous now. We know Canadian tends to hunt Romers down on this map to an extent, so it is very likely that, much like last round, mm -hmm. Canadian's going to go after him again. Yep. So he's going to have to be very careful, very smart, and use his heartbeat sensor somewhat horizontally to keep himself alive till the end of the round. I'm intrigued by the Twitch pick. I mean, Twitch has had better days in terms of picks. Um, Jackal has been a huge operator to play on this map. Both Canadian and Fox being the two operators that, well, the two players that play the operator quite a bit and quite a bit of success. And it's. A bit weird that we don't see that in the Twitch being in play. Maybe well, EG are expecting a lot more Mira play. To be fair, we've seen Canadian shift to more of a fragging role over time, mm -hmm. and that is definitely something that the F2 excels at. Not yeah, to mention the extra bit of backup utility you get for said Miras if they come up, so you don't feel like you have to ban it, because teams, as we've said before, are moving away from banning that. So in that situation, you're leaving a little more up the chance. Are they going to bring that or not? And he's just kind of helping make sure that that's not such a potential problem mm -hmm. if it comes up. Whether that's why he's doing it or not, it is definitely going to serve that function. Hmm. Well, Rampy will move in here. And just playing solo up in the vault. It's a very standard move to, you know, just spend some time on the opposite end of the map early on before falling back and just waste a bit of time on your opponent's side. And Later on, the reinforcements actually corner the attacking side in this part of the map if they end up spending too much time in this position. But what is the most important part of this map? For me, it's about holding on to Bedroom as an attacker, no matter what. And we're actually finally seeing... Uh, there it is, the, the roam hunting. Yeah, there's something happening downstairs for once. And the wine cellars are going to be bloodied, or at least red. Ooh, from. he's got backup, though. This it, is where, this is where it works, because he can call out for Chala to make the plays. But Canadian is very patient on angles. And he will be happy to let his team do most of the work while he's holding an angle to keep these people off He's sight. just off the range. Uh, but he wishes he had old pulse. I'm sure a lot of people wish. <laughs> I should be able to find it. There we go. The Twitch has been spotted. Go. So who will engage first? Hopefully neither of them uh, right away, and they'll just wait Canadian out to an extent because he's one. Oh, the oh. shotgun! There you go. That's, that's a good use. That's why the shotgun is such a huge pick here for the mute. But 
It's Geo that'll get one more. A thinking nade here to get dropped and Attack no more smoke. And Bosco down as well. NVK will finish him off. And this uh, turns out pretty well for EG. Losing two operators, two important operators. Oh, don't line up here. The C4 from Rampy will get thrown up nice. and will connect. What? No! The miss. No, that timing. Is that is that a hard one, a hard floor? It I think certainly it might is. have been. Can't tell that from the ping. All right, well, Chala will get the kill on MVK still. 3v2 advantage for SSG as they're able to bring things back to their favor. The Habana, which is the big pick here for the squad, has done the job. And really, honestly, you play this, especially professional level, don't break Thermite, just bring Habana. Make your life easier, really. It's not, it's not about challenging yourself as well. The, the, playing the game at this level is already challenging enough. Necrox will try to go for the peak on Redeemer. Bit of damage done to the Maestro, but little time remaining here for EG. At least the two players left alive. Rampy will move up just a bit and should find the angle. No, Necrox and Young will find a kill each. And you know what? It's all up to Redeemer yet again. We'll try to rotate in to deny the Diffuser plant. The Sledge is in the back as he peeks very quickly, but Redeemer is still alive. No angle found. There you go, Young on the floor. Takes down Redeemer, shot in the foot, and EG will win round number two. Certainly close, though. Definitely had a possibility for Redeemer to be able to bring that back, but just the angle crossfire they had left them with some 90-degree angles that were maybe a little bit too tight, and also the timing uh, from the sledge there just somewhat working out. But they had a pretty good round for the most part. Yeah, they maybe lost a, a few too many people, but the fact that they were able to make Canadian waste a lot of time and then still get the kill on him and have enough time to rotate back upstairs definitely worked out pretty well for SSG. It just, they did not have a lot of site control because they committed two people downstairs, so they weren't able to get back up. And as you said before, sometimes they're trying to get back into site because the reinforcements can be difficult because you can't have the same level of rotations. So... Definitely going to be interesting as they look like they're going for the same lineup pretty much on defense this time again. For Statue, they're going to try it a second time. One good old Statue trophy. Defenders we'll see though if they're going to be a little bit better prepared this time. Now, down. Canadian's going to be also playing the same role. So I got to imagine they're going to play it differently downstairs, knowing that Canadian's going to go hunt that, unless they wouldn't, you know, think, oh, well, that's fine. We'll take advantage of what we know about what Canadian's likely to do. But Canadian might go for a very different route this time and decide to, to better support his team in terms of maybe cut off their rotation up the stairs rather than try and actually hunt them down there. If you know how they want to rotate back up when pressure comes down from the rest of your team, you don't have to play as far down there. You don't have to get as deep in solo. You can use the fact that time or the defuse potentially coming down baits them back up in and into it. Something we saw being done against Accelerate last match. I just want to mention something for people seeing this. Uh, the big reason of why Redeemer is destroying the, uh, the, the glass before he sets up the, the Maestro cameras is because if you set up your evil eyes on the glass and one bullet comes in and shatters the glass, it automatically destroys your maestro. To be fair, that does make sense. Yes. But that's the thing. If yeah. you guys didn't know it, there you go. Today I learned. And make sure that you don't make that mistake because it's a big part of utility. Um, those evil eyes can definitely do a lot of work. Nice thing is it's easy to avoid. Just smash the glass. Yep. Well, we will see Canadian going downstairs again, maybe taking a little bit of a different approach, but it looks like he's not going to find anyone down there. Instead, he's looking for them to rotate down potentially against him, but Rampy's playing a little bit more upstairs. And again, this is the same bomb site. He's just going to be playing a little bit differently. And in this case, it's smart on their part. Don't fall for Canadian's trap, but also make him waste a lot of time waiting for you. No drone in from Necrox to try and reveal anybody. Playing upstairs here in the game room, and there we go, we'll find one. Just fall back for a second, that was the Jaeger or Bosco. Necrox will move in, at least going with the drone. I so, uh, would like to see what's going on as well, but good use the mute jammer. Yeah, Chala will deny that. The EMP is going to get chucked in here, we'll allow the drone to continue on its merry way. Zen VK actually peeks in fairly aggressively here. He is a, a somewhat aggressive faster, much like Laxing, so it is not a huge surprise. He's I mean, it, it helps if you have someone that can frag on a support role. If their support role is not necessarily just for the end of the round, if it's for the first half of the round, you can get a lot of benefit from them being able to play somewhat aggressively and provide extra cover as your people enter and take map control. So it is, it's very helpful to have people like NVK and Laxing do that. Yeah, well, NVK here is just going to be watching for potential rotations. They still know there's a player on the opposite end, and the Jaeger that has not rotated just yet. Uh, Geo is just working around off. to the bedroom, as again, it is a very important part of the map. It's either a transition situ like position or just 
your main Ooh. anchor for the attack. NVK will get one and then immediately fall back and nobody really pouncing on the opportunity here. Redeemer falling from Space Station and Bosco just sitting in place. ADSs will catch the first couple of uh, flashbangs. His Necros will get one. NVK with another on Bosco eliminating the Jaeger. All that's left is Shala and Rampy here. Oh, oh no! no! Shala will not connect! You can't well, spam won't help you at point um, blank. There you go. NVK already with three kills and Rampy spotted from below. Canadian still watching in. Turn around from the stairs and find the kill. And there you go. That was pretty swift here from EG. <laughs> Unfortunately, spending so much time looking for the heartbeat, just didn't even see the heart coming towards him. Well, not the greatest round that time for SSG. Definitely struggled. That is twice now they have lost that bomb site. Definitely not going to be a good bomb site for them. And unfortunately for them, with the current format, there's a good chance they may have to try it again if they actually are successful on other sites. They are going to go back to Aviator now that they can. It's still the same rotation rules as before, which also means the possibility of a third bomb site twice. Mm -hmm. Now, the situation, so Oregon matches should be especially interesting, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. As I imagine teams are less inclined to play Oregon than they already were. As, uh, as now they may have to play Tower twice. Yeah. That's I'm, not great. Honestly, I've kind of lost my taste for um, for Oregon. I don't know. Attackers it's been... It was always my favorite map, but I have to say I, I am starting to uh, become a bit more interested in some other maps. Maybe more so, but we'll see. You know, maybe people will change how they play on it, but uh, more than likely, not so much until there's no operator's fault. All right, we're going to start the setup here in round number four, and we are back in game room. Uh, so we get to see how Space Station sh won't really change what they have in mind, and no real changes here for the squad, that's for sure. Of course, there's always the flexibility of, hey, do you want to run two shotguns, or do you want to play a pulse? It really depends on how you'd like to play things. There's no real right or wrong answer. Well, they're playing the same way they did round one, so. Yeah, and here Necrox is bringing the Jackal. So Canadian will stick to the Twitch just in case they have to deal with the mirror. I mean, it hasn't been working out terrible for him, uh, but at the same time, he wasn't even really able, to, or he wasn't really doing a lot till the end of the round last time as well, just because he's, I don't know, I mean, it's not a terrible role for him to play, but he's playing this kind of somewhat frag-heavy role, and I know there's nothing wrong with a frag operator, or, you know, a heavy gun operator playing an angle, just holding an angle. But at the same time, I feel like maybe we could be seeing more utility out of Canadian. That being said, he is doing a good job at least cutting off certain areas or trying to control the roamers to an extent. And it's not, you know, losing them rounds or anything like that. I just uh, feel like there might be some more potential for him to play a little bit more with his team. But we'll see as the rounds go on whether or not that is a factor. Rampy, however, roaming kind of inside at the moment. Yeah, and Necrox and MVK are... Uh, backing one another up as, of course, they have uh, spotted at least one player below. And actually, they are on the stairs. So that's both the Ella and the Smoke. Yeah, yeah they're kind of pushing back a little bit now that uh, study control has been taken. Yeah, and this is why you run the Havana. It's just don't, don't run Thermite. And we have this conversation so many times. But really, Havana allows you a lot more flexibility. You see the first hole that was opened up on the bottom? You cannot destroy that as a... Uh, Defender with impact tricks or anything like that. There we go. This is some mute playing on the opposite end. Uh, the smoke being on site. But Joe's coming in from uh, above and he's going to watch the stairs here for rotations. Now, you got to be careful with how you engage the stairs, but Chala will go down and Gio will find the second one. They know there's still one more player downstairs and Gio will be watching and waiting here. Yeah, at this point, he can just hold an angle. Yeah, and very much, very much uh, con qu quick control of any late round rotations here. Young will just go for the plant ASAP. Necrox still tagged just a bit, but not enough to really do much to Evil Genies as we've gotten the diffuser down, and they have a perfect bit of line of sight on them. Geo even from below, destroying the bottom floor. So they have an angle on the diffuser from below. NVK will get one more on Redeemer. Necrox with one, and Bosco last alive. He tries to engage the Habana very close, but Necrox in the back will find one more in the study, and that'll be the end of the round. Evil Genius is perfect control here. This is definitely not looking good for SSG in the sense that you said this was a, a defensive side of map earlier. Well, with it not going to the defense, that puts them at a huge disadvantage on round switch if EG can pull off uh, a lot of defensive wins similar to how they've been pulling off these attack wins, and it's uh, Though, not a great place to be in. Here's the thing. EG, at, at least playing against C9, had only one defensive win in the U.S. Nationals. True, but I would imagine they would change things up a little bit. Very since. true, and also that was with uh, not their main lineup. 
even though Gotcha still played pretty well. I mean, I know we're repeating ourselves, but it is very important to take a look at the context at which everything really happens because it really does shed a massive light on how things are working in the team. And if things have indeed changed, then we'll see a big change on the attacking side lineup. Possibly a bit more aggression with Ying being in play. And Space Station, huh, here's the thing. We've been discussing this a while ago. It's like, when do you switch sites if you're on the defensive side and you lost the site? Well, usually you will stick to the site if you know that the round was lost because of your glaring mistakes. Yeah. If not, then you can just change the site because, oh, our opponents are just better at it. They I'm, probably shouldn't play it. In this case, it is a site they've won. But to be fair, they only they won the one round Evo Gene has bought their money. So Very true. That is, that is a differentiator. The only round they've won was against Thermite where they were able to impact Five seconds left before So Very true. That definitely seems to have made a difference to an extent. That also, it Attackers feels a little bit like EG are somewhat defusing. reading into the way that Space Station are playing it, the way they're playing that kind of two-man roam, the way Rampy is very heavy on that roam, whether it be on Pulse or Ella. It, it started to get a little predictable, and now they're bringing out a more aggro side attack to just take advantage of the fact, hey, there's likely to be two men off site based off the way they've been playing. Let's just push in earlier, especially if we can kill Redeemer early like we did that one round, because he's going to be playing in somewhat predictable ways earlier in the round. If we can take advantage of that, and there, there he is right there as I say that, then absolutely you can get in there, especially if Necrox can get some good footprints early. That might put some pressure on people to stay in positions where they might be a little more secure by reinforced walls. Again, though, that, uh, that assumes that you can burn the ABSs and get the situation where you can get those candelas and things like that, get the right angles on them without getting shot mid-throw. But... I certainly have the utility to do it, not to mention the smokes from Necrox to be able to help cover those throws. So uh, it's definitely going to be down to whether or not SSG can read what's coming from this attack and be able to properly defend against it before it's too late and the plant's down. Mm, well, Geo will move in here, take down the default cam, and then set up for his drone to walk in just in case there was a mute jammer. And it would make a lot of sense that a mute jammer would be sitting here. It'll spot the maestro, will fall away, and they'll have a bit of an angle to look through. So, oh, oh no, oh, Redeemer oh. finds the shot on Geo, just playing the angle against him. And can't really knock off the discs here from the Havana. As he'll try to use that to his advantage, Necrox though, lying on the floor, threads it. Redeemer does go down. SMG 11 shots rattling in, connecting on the side of the wall. It is MVK, will connect at least one to Thinking Nade's head here. Utility being launched into the site. There you go, the first smoke here to block things off. Bosco trying to contest the L hallways. NVK is just watching for potential rotates. Chaw's still in. He still has uh, some some utility set on the floor with his disruptors, but there's not really much that's going to help him here. Canadian being stunned by the El Agishmot as Rempi is just watching the stairs for having to fall on the site, at least look towards it. Well, that's why you see Canadian rotating up now, but he could actually come right into where Rampy's at. Perfect timing. Fortunately, Rampy just not landing enough of the Oh, spots. no! Canadian still wins the fight, and Bosco will land one on NVK, but might have just been enough here for EG, shutting down the L of the close-range gunfights. But more difficult to deal with. Bosco will be able to find the kill on the back. No, there you go. Necrox is going to go down, but both Young and Canadian are still alive, and Young saved by the bell. Bosco will have to rotate back in. He is at full health, and a fuser has not gone down. So EG will have to rotate to the opposite end Eight in the in the remain. aviation room. See Redeemer giving out information. Oh no, the headshot lining in directly. He still has one more to go. The fuser is being set on the floor, and the Habana's low on health. Finally, he'll find him. Bosco will clutch the round. Jaeger smoke, whatever it may be, Bosco is here, and he's ready to save the day. And there you go. Space Station Gaming will set the second round up on the board. Remind you, that is not the last round of the half. Five rounds in, you still need one more. You play six on each side. I was going to... I was going to commend Bosco for playing at cool, even in situations that were clutch situations that I was like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe he's not going to win them, but he's still playing at cool and calm either yeah. way, not giving up. Certainly paid off that round. Yes. Great game sense, though. It's just... It's a bit of a shame that he shot through the Habana and she had, like, one health at the end of it. Yeah. 
That does but, that doesn't help. But at the same time, he he knew that. Okay, I have some idea. The plant went down right there based off of how long they took it, jockey yeah, to plant sense. the down. So we, I know they they changed up positions. They're going to be planting in an area that's not exposed to the holes directly. Where is that most likely to be? This corner here. I can't see whether he's not there or not. But you know what? I might have the angle to tap whoever it is if they're hiding in that gotcha. spot. And that's that's game sense. That's knowing again. angles. But he also made very dangerous but smart peeks to get an idea where people were at. You saw him twice peek and get his head shot at, but he took advantage of being a three speed to be able to make those peaks. I wouldn't say safely, but a, a little bit less risky than any of the slower operators would. The other thing they gave him a chance on that round was Redeemer getting the kill onto Geo as the first kill. Yeah, he maybe got traded after that, but he took away their opportunity to use those candles along with the smoke to get that plant down much earlier in the round, which did give Bosco the opportunity to play off the extra time he had yeah. of them trying to get that plant down. Insertion. It was, it was, for a lot of people Five looking at it, it's just individual skill, but it's kind of a combo of everything. Uh, information being really relayed in from the maestro, even from beyond the grave. Yeah. Still fairly important in situations like that. And then, of course, on top of it, you cannot deny Bosco's individual skill is all the way on top. And that really showed in that round. Well, here in the last round of this first half, round number six, EG will still be on the attack, of course, and they're going to be moving in still again with the Habana. Important note of the new format as well is you can now end the first half at an even score. That is something yes. that was not possible before. They'd always end in a 3-2 or even more uneven than that. And it was a situation where someone would always be coming out ahead in the half. Now that doesn't have to be the case. If SSG win this next round, it comes out tied. So we can have a tie that leads to a tie later on, whereas that was not a situation possible in the 5-5 format. And really, we'll see how things transpire throughout the uh, the season here, but it does make a lot of sense that you know, we'll be seeing less ties overall at the end of the matches. And if we More in do, the middle, yeah, for sure. If, if we do get them, it means they're still a lot more close than you'd think. And Ooh. aye, yay, yay, yay. Gee, on the stairs. He finds the shot. Shala goes down. Interesting that Shala is running the mute with uh, no shotgun, which, again, it's, it's not something you have to run, but it's just... It's very flexible just to run SMG 11 shotgun, but it seems like there wasn't a lot of setup required yeah. to have two shotguns they, on here. They were running two earlier, but yeah, certainly Indeed. don't need two now. But they're also playing a bomb site they had not played yet, which is down there in the Kitchen. They've been playing entirely top four bomb sites between Aviator and Statue Trophy the whole time. Mm -hmm. So this is, yeah, a, a first change up for them. So, ooh, nice angles being opened here, though, from Geo. And still, a, a, still a big part of attacking this Kitchen site is, oh, hey, I will need to take control of the, the bathroom because I need to know what's going on below me and maybe find a kill or two. It, it's not really out of the ordinary to do that. Gio's going to rotate down and just watch in here as Young will try to open up the wall in from laundry and try to maybe walk in for a plant in the dining hall. Thinking Nade, getting ready to uh, deal with anyone in there. Now, you can potentially impact your call of that, but of course, the Habana kind of make things a lot more complicated for the uh, defenders to deal to do this sort of uh, play. Thinking Nade taking a bit of damage, but still nothing too deadly. Losing one player on here uh, really will hamper you because there's so many angles, especially from oh, the hallway oh, for oh. you to watch, and Thinking Nade goes down, walks right into Necrox's grenade. Oh, the unfortunate timing for Bosco, not there, NBK punishing it. Redeemer again falling to Canadian and just peeks into the set with the FAMAS. And Canadian will find another one. Redeemer in the back getting taken down. Evil Geniuses. A beautiful bit of play here in the round. Just taking control of the top floor, clearing it out, getting the one kill that they required, and then following things up by opening up as many lines of sight into, uh, well, the dining hall mainly, from top and from the side to take out any players I mean, that are on it and just Canadian just gets frags off of it. Yeah, it was it was really a big difference. So there was two things that made that bomb site work out much worse for them. One is the additional angles that they were able to open up horizontally on them. And two is the additional angles they were able to open up vertically. When you're on the top bomb site, people can't open up the roof above you and in situations where you throw a grenade down like Necrox did that managed to catch them off guard. So 
because top floor, they were able to do a much better job hiding in sight, right? Because you don't have the floors getting opened above you, people chucking things down, getting angles on you, opening up pressure. Once they got down to the bottom floor, it, it definitely became a different ball game. Their ability to play inside sight didn't really benefit them nearly as much as it did on the top floor. And their inability to play a roam game with Canadian hunting them the way they were on that bomb site really just left them at a huge disadvantage in terms of being able to have any map control to slow them down at all either. So it was, I don't know, that was just a, not a great bomb site for them. Now, one thing to highlight is the fact that um, EG did play Villa multiple times throughout um, US Nationals. Yeah. And they they had one more match uh, against Rogue. Now, I want to highlight specifically C9 and Rogue in those two matchups because both teams are pretty excellent on this map. And Villa actually went the way of EG when they played Rogue. It was 7 5, so it went over to overtime. And. In that way, four defensive rounds were won by EG and an extra one on defense or, or on overtime as well. I think that's the one I'm thinking of where he was where Gotcha was playing a lot of the clash on the on the ninety. So there you go. Even though in that in that matchup, uh, Echo, Glaz, Maverick, and Maestro will ban. So, interesting enough, there's quite a few things to look around with. So, hey, thanks for everyone letting us know that there's some extra stuff and extra numbers that we all need to look out for. Seems like every season there's extra numbers. It's great, man. <laughs> I <laughs> love statistics. Is. No, it absolutely is. And uh, shout out to our friends at CGG for helping with some extra statistics bonus on top of that as well. So, Bosco hoping to try and channel a little bit of what Gio was bringing last time. Unfortunately, he is uh, seeming to be a little bit slower at it. As, as there we go, a lot of shots coming out, just getting slowed down. We'll see if NBK, though, can play Maestro half as well as Redeemer was doing in a lot of the earlier rounds. All right, well, NBK just looking around here. Bosco with a nade all the way in the back, just to be sure. And again, beaching round being thrown up into the uh, evil eye to destroy it. It's just much easier to rely on the explosive radius of the breaching round compared to Zofia's impact grenades, just because you have a larger explosive radius with uh, with Ash compared to Zofia. So that is a clear like numbers advantage. I think so far we've only seen Zofia played even once so far. But oh, Rampy, okay, nice job hundred. through the window. There goes NDK, but you need to finish that kill because we saw what happened when they didn't on uh, Redeemer earlier. There we go. There you go. That's MVK down, and Rampy will be the one to do it. Canadian still not spotted here as Bosco is just moving around. Um, he's going to turn off the ERC, but there you go. Bosco should have given out the information, turning on the ERC again. He can move around and uh, play through the hatch, but Canadian realizing there's someone in the hallway as well, doesn't really want to deal with the Ash of Bosco, and very smartly will fall back. Rampy just moving in here with a switch drone, and a Twitch really in play here, though the odd thing still is Chala is running the Thermite, and this is really the only position with the Thermite is a good pick. You're just wanting to open a big hole to enter through into the game room, and well, the hallway, once you have control of it, is the perfect position for such a play. Absolutely, you can, especially if you can open up the uh, gun vault as well. It is mm -hmm. a great place to open up to be able to just cut them, cut their rotation off really between the two sites, so they're forced to use the one on the bar side, and that's uh, a trickier one to rotate through sometimes. Very true. Well, Rampy will find another one here on Canadian. Geo from below finds one on Redeemer. Still C4 available. Necrox with one more. He walks right into two players here. One dropped in the back. Rampy last man alive, and Diffuser is being held here by EG. 2v1 in this situation as Rampy will finish off. Necrox will have to walk right into the bar. And no, he lands right on top, and Young will still find the kill. Two at the end here for Young as he had already down one of these two players. And aiming to the side but instantly flicking onto the twitch and able to finish her off before she looks down onto him so there you go great play there by young and eg take the advantage five two here as we head into round number eight it's pretty good control well, on the site even if even if the hallway was taken very swiftly by space station i gotta admit we were saying why is there the same percentage odds for eg versus ssg as there is for Reciprocity versus Accelerate, but you get to the halfway point and the score lines are the same. So it is looking, unfortunately, kind of close to what we just saw in the last match. I mean, plenty of room for things to change here and very likely they will, but at the same time, it is a little worrying for SSG to be down like this, especially with such a new Defenders strong player. Maybe they just haven't figured out the right roles yet daggers. because Bosco seems to be doing fairly decent at what he's being asked to do, but at the same time, 
maybe some of the other roles had to shift to accommodate the way he plays, as you mentioned, differently than Brian, and that might have caused a little bit of a disarray in how they're playing. Because of that, that could cause problems. Obviously, Redeemer's mostly playing stuff he would have been comfortable with before, at least on defense. But uh, it only really brought them two rounds. Now, those were two rounds entirely on defense. If this still continues to be a uh, defensive-sided map, that won't be great. But if EG has some weaker defenses like they had some of the time before, this is going to see a chance for SSG to kind of climb back at least a little bit, if not try and get towards a tie. Yeah, it would be weird to have the first two games end up in 7-2s, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see the reinforcements here being set up. Heavy commitment from uh, EG on the opposite end of the map. So, still, even though we don't see game room in play. Yep, there you go. Geo just falling back, realizing he's only going to deal with the ACOGs in here. And see the Goobines being set down on the floor, slow things down for the attacking side of Space Station. As Bosco is trying to decide where is he going to go from. Space Station just continuing with the drone play as they head up to the bedroom, but bedrooms are a very important part of the attack. Still, it is not the only part. You should not neglect the entire map, basically. Yeah, I mean, so, that's something that you had, for example, Canadian definitely not doing in the way he would attack the bottom floor mm -hmm. primarily. You still need someone to do that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, the Ash here, or even the IQ, or the Twitch, are three operators that can definitely do this sort of thing, leaving thinking it in Chala around a bedroom to eventually uh, destroy the wall. Definitely will work out. Now, I'm not sure if uh, Necrox is running impact grenades here. Uh, no, he is running barbed wire, so the only person with impacts in this situation should be Geo. I'm not sure, if, again, if Canadian is running um, his bulletproof camera. So, yep, looks like yep. it makes sense, especially for this bomb site. Mm -hmm. So we only have one set of those impacts, and yeah, nothing should be fighting against this. Um, what's there? Wait, how's that hole so tiny? Looks like he's gonna stop that though. Yep. So well played. Was by there? Field. Is that an open hole on the side? On the right side? I'm still not sure. The attacker I mean, the has my blind. No, on the bottom. Yeah. No. I mean, it looks is it like open? It blew open to it an is. extent, but not all the way. How did... Was it the entire side of the floor, but the wall destroyed? I think he was hitting it with the... Um, the. I was going to say X-Cameras, but no, they didn't bring a Habana. No. Yeah. So it's... I mean, we saw a similar situation uh, earlier Maybe. where um, where EG was able to do the same thing. They were there able to get like a bottom of the wall open, okay. despite yeah. the floor being destroyed as well. So it seems these guys have managed to adapt a little bit in terms of finding ways to deal with that. Ooh, nice shot there, but not quite enough. Yeah, but a bit of a bit of a weird situation there. But there you go. Bosco is going to get pulled back here, as Necrox will be finished off. There you go. Nicely done by Chala. Still using the window to his advantage. NVK with one though onto Rampy. I'll take down the Twitch that was supposed to run in from the opposite end of the map later on. Redeemer still peeking in, playing with the Og this time. I'm not sure what NVK is trying to do in this one here. And Geo will find it. Redeemer will go down. Still spotting the second as Young should be able to support here. But Chala will find him and Bosco with the second. second All up to big bad Canadian as Chala will go down. The Diffuser's in the back. What? What are you doing? Diffuser's in the back. Six seconds left on the clock. He'll try to fight, but no. Thinking Aid is finally able to get the shot. Two seconds left, Canadian will fall down, even with the fuser being all the way in the back of the closet. My god, that was... <laughs> that was close. Yeah, that was definitely a worrying situation to be in. Obviously, I seriously doubt they just left it there. It was probably more a case of someone dying uh, with the diffuser a little bit out of position, but... Either way, well done by SSG managing to save that. Unfortunately for Canadian, he was kind of surrounded. Had he been able to land the one kill, he might have been able to whip around to get the second. But because he missed too many shots. In, in that spot, when there's two people coming in from, you know, one from each angle. Yeah. You know, there's not there's not a lot that you can expect from your players. Well, you can expect a lot. You just won't always. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> if you say it that way. Yeah. Well, what are Canadian? I was going to say, is Canadian be going to Pulse or Vigil? Because, yeah, neither of them are banned, and he's definitely going to be playing either one as often as he can, pretty much. Defenders protect Although, your you know, he did play the dog last time, but yeah, he's going to go back to good old Pulse. Something he's going to be good on. Canadian, pretty much everyone with somewhat even kills on EG, whereas not as much in the case of Rampy and Pinky Nade on SSG. Bosco, though, definitely showing up for his team as his Redeemer and Chala. So it's just a case of them needing to pick up a few more rounds in their favor, and I think things will look a little more evened out. But either way, definitely not going to be a 5 2 scoreline or 7 2 scoreline at the end. 
Well, Geo setting up here behind the desk in Astronomy. Is, again, uh, we'll have the site where he played. Some mistakes done by AG, and again, the big decision is when do we switch? I like to use the deployable shield just because Attackers a lot of times uh, players inside Attackers Astronomy are forced to hide behind the a desk, which becomes yeah. very predictable and leaves you nowhere to move towards. Yeah. Whereas you saw they loft, left the wall soft right there behind the deployable shield, leaving the opportunity for them to open up a rotation hole to be able to actually crawl away. I mean, there is enough of a gap to potentially catch someone rotating uh, between the deployable shield and the wall, but at the same time, if they're not watching the right angle for that, you might be able to get away in a lot of situations where they're just peeking and taking shots at the shield or trying to catch someone that they think is behind the desk. So I like that use of uh, trying to make astronomy a little more defendable because we often see people die there because the desk is, is only so good. All right, Bosco just continuing to drone alongside the squad here, Space Station, as, again, they are attacking the same site that they uh, went through before. The mute spotted in the back, and Chala will use one of his uh, sets of thermite to open up the wall Reloading. into site here, at least what usually would be a site uh, in in the game room and well, in the back in aviation, but has given EG more than enough time to just fall back and there will be nobody left here as, there you go, they're on the opposite end. They're, they've expended utility and they have burned away time and that's exactly what you're looking for if your space station C4 thrown up and no! Ah! Oh, hi. Fortunately for Canadian, Attackers just did not bomb. find the uh, the right moment to trigger that. And see, we see one of the uses of the Twitch that seems to be brought pretty consistently by both teams, whether it be Rampy or Canadian. Well, Rampy just moving in, trying to find some sort of pick early on, but none will be given. Uh, Flash right in here from uh, Bosco. Usually there's somebody sticking around here from Statue and will not be the case here. Extra flash being thrown in just in case there's something been missed by the Twitch. Scanning in from uh, well, the bottom floor. Bosco has fallen back though. And I don't know if he spotted the player here downstairs, but should be able to react to it and at least play close to it. ADS is as well being popped off here as both Twitch drones have finally been destroyed. Rampy peeking in very slowly here as there's no control of the bedroom. The fuser being put down in the back with the smoke will die and Young will connect from the opposite and Young checking the C4 right into Redeemer thinking it was one on a Canadian but will be enough to save the day here for Space Station 3v3 with the fuser right on the floor in front of the doorway of a statuary there's 25 seconds on the clock see the twitch disappointed as well here but what's going on Chala will find it NVK will go down but Young the perfect spot with the SMG-11 to find to go. kill that he needs. It's Geo as well to connect from the opposite end. Geo and one, Young with another. Now watching up close, the fuser still not been spotted and set. Thinking Nade will have to rotate into the opposite end, but they're ready for him and Young will finish him off. Evil geniuses will take round number nine and take the, get themselves a bit closer to victory. Literally a round away. That was absolutely Young's round. Just fighting yep. from across the way on the other side absolutely just destroying all the attempts at attacking. And I mean, that was a great push in and ability to get the smoke, but just quickly punished and then punished and then punished again with the C4 or the gun. He got at least three kills that round from that side. It was definitely just something they were not prepared to deal with, which is, uh, I mean, you saw him drop down to, to deal with, okay, I don't want to get shot from the side from uh, Rampy, but then immediately after getting the kill that he gets, gets shot from the side he was yeah. trying to avoid because he had to get up to get the kill onto the smoke. And it's just one of the situations where you, you need someone there covering that. And well, they unfortunately got both killed by the same player of Young. All right, now the big question. Can Space Station come back from this? Because Attackers they have done so in the past. Well, if they, they don't can. this round, they certainly won't the rest of the night. Yes, and they need to tie this up. This the, Again, we'll remind you, the only way to go through with this is yeah. to tie things up. If you win the match, you get three points. You know, you, we saw it with the reciprocity. Remind you of how things work, really. You win, you get three points. You lose, you get nothing. And if you tie, each team gets a point. Yeah, I mean, it's the beginning of the season. There's still a lot of opportunity to make things up because but, not only do you have the invitation, you also have a lot of time after that. But that's what we said last season. And to be fair, last season, the second half were often very different from the first. Exactly, and that's so, the thing yeah. you need to worry about. Meta changes um, with 
caught it in Nomad. I guess what I'm saying is if you get off to a bad start, you're, you're very uh, likely, if anything, <laughs> season last uh, indication, point. you might be off to a great finish. We certainly saw teams that managed to make some comebacks late in the season, so I'm not saying it's going to happen for sure, but it's certainly a possibility for teams that might get off the slow start, especially with how many teams have roster changes. Evo Geniuses didn't change anyone. Space Station did, so if they get off to a rocket start, they can chalk it up to, well, Bosco's new, we had to change some roles. Not a big deal. Yeah, that's true. I mean, obviously, you want to win every single match. Let's be honest with that. There's, there's no one wanting to just tie. Still, like, you know, it's it's like in football, like actual football and you know, stuff like that. It's just, hey, you'll lose against a rival, but you'll just beat everybody else. I don't know what actual football meant because that could have meant either. Really. Ball that you play with, you know, with your foot, which you know makes sense. But Canadian will get the kill on Bosco early on, so the Ash is gonna get removed here. A um, bit problematic, because now you don't have anybody the really to watch your down. flanks later on in the round. And uh, Usually when EG get a bit, you know, fl flustered or just want to end things, they'll run the Rook and the Doc combo, and it's, it's definitely More something... More often than not, we've been saying that, and they've been just fine. Yeah. To be fair, like, that that, that used to be more of a, we're tilted, we're going to lose thing. Now it's more of a, hey, we want to close this out, and we're just kind of like, we're going to play our safer roles a little, a little bit longer and not be as aggressive or be aggressive with the ability to take a few bullets back. So you never know, could go either way, but this is the closeout round potentially for EG. All right, Rampy continuing in here on the drone with the Combatant on the Twitch, and we'll try to find any uh, utility that's been set up, you know, bomb. ADSs and such, but he'll lose one of them. I'm not sure if he already lost the second one or it, was, or it is deployed somewhere. And yeah, deployed somewhere, deployed answers somewhere. that question. Thank you, Rampy, for hearing us. <laughs> Of course it, he can. Yeah. Right? I mean, we've seen so far a lot of great utility out of the Twitch drones in terms of taking out ADSs because there has been a lot of Jaeger play. So it's been but helpful. I don't think anybody realizes Rampy's even... No, he's here. just going to... Don't don't knock or use the doorbell. This is where you maybe take some shots through, if nothing else. Those shots as well might not give him away completely because the door is completely untouched. It won't be letting as much sound through as if there was any damage to it at all. Very true. So there we there's oh. go. Oh. No one there. Unfortunately for Rampy, as Canadian here has fallen back and the door is finally destroyed. Well, now Canadian is watching, and NVK will be the one to go down. I'm not sure what NVK is. Maybe he was trying to contest Rampy. But I, I, if I'm the maestro, I probably don't want to do that. And Canadian will win it out. So now he can heal himself back up. And that's pretty much an equal trade. As still losing the maestro is not great. Young, though, will make sure that this is positive in the way of EG, taking down Chala, as to alive, thinking nade, and Redeemer will go down instantaneously. Evil Geniuses will clean things up, and that will be that 7-3 scoreline in our second matchup of the night and of NA Pro League for Season 9. Man. Well. EG really put the hammer down. They don't want a bad start like they had last season. I'll tell you what. They are definitely off to a good one, and so far showing that having Geo back has definitely helped. But either way, not the worst showing for SSG, just definitely not the one they were hoping for. Hmm. I, I, I really hope that, that we get an interview for this one because in our first matchup, uh, we 